Well, good morning and welcome to another live video here at Concordia Technology Solutions. My name is Peter Frank. Thanks for joining us once again. Um, one of the uh, great things about doing these videos is we have a variety of topics. And last week we got into kind of a heavy topic about isolation in this world of technology that is meant to connect us and instead often keeps us apart or provides less than meaningful communication. Well, today we're going to go on the other side of things, still that same theme of communication, but go into much more of a practical tool than anything theoretical. Now, I always enjoy learning about new things, and so as we were talking about this, uh, an idea for the post, uh, our author for this blog post for the week, Jen Eichmann, mentioned something that I'd never heard of before called Group Me. And so immediately my thought was that's a fantastic thing to share because if I hadn't heard of it, I'm sure many others hadn't, and it sounded like a really cool tool. So um, join me in welcoming Jen Eichmann to our video today. Jen, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. I appreciate you being here and thanks for writing the blog post. We'll share a link for that in the comments shortly. Um, but Jen, tell us a little bit about yourself and what your role is there at the, um, let me get it right, the, you were the Director of Development at the Lutheran Student Center and also at Fairmount Coffee. So that's an interesting title. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I'm at the, I call it, we call it the LSC, which is the Lutheran Student Center. And we are a campus ministry at Wichita State University. We're just south of campus. And we've been there since probably like the 1960s, 70s. And um, about a year ago, August 3rd, we decided to just kind of change things up. So we opened Fairmount Coffee Company, which is our latest outreach ministry. So if you hear um, smoothie machines or talking in the background, it's because we are hopping today, which is nice because this is the first week of summer break. Oh, so wow. my role is the development director and so what I do is I get to um, work with volunteers, connect with potential donors, and I help a lot behind the scenes with communication and marketing for both the LSC and Fairmount Coffee. Very cool. Well, Jen, you've been writing for us for a number of years. Um, I'm glad to have you back. It's been a few months since we've had a post from you, so thanks for writing this. And this is <laughs> it's been a crazy first... year. <laughs> yes, <laughs> obviously, if you guys are launching coffee shops. I wish we had a coffee shop around here. That would be both a good and bad thing for me. <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk about GroupMe. Um, so first off, could you just explain what is GroupMe and uh, tell us a little um, bit about it? Sure. Yeah, GroupMe is a group messaging app and it is, um, it is available for Android, iPhone, and even um, text messaging. And what it is, is it's basically um, like a group text message, but it's through an app. Okay. So um, what is unique about GroupMe compared to other popular messaging services like Facebook Messenger or even something like Snapchat, that uh, the core of that social media platform is direct communication? What's different about GroupMe? Sure. Um, so one of the huge things that's different is young adults are on Facebook. Um, so that's, that's probably the hugest difference that we've seen. And so a lot of people are using GroupMe, a lot of our students and young adults here are using GroupMe in lieu of Facebook or Snapchat to connect with people um, outside of their groups, whether that's an academic group or a Bible study here. And so um, one of the things that's kind of unique against Facebook is that on Facebook you have to be friends in order to communicate with someone or you have to approve of a direct message behind the scenes. So that's probably the biggest difference I would see. Um, one of the things that I really like compared to Facebook Messenger is um, when I log into my account, whether that's on my phone or on my um, desktop, is I see a list of all of the different groups I'm in. So you can actually name your groups. So for instance, I also work with another non-for-profit here in Wichita called Passageways. And um, we help US veterans that are near homeless or homeless. And so we use it more of an administrative role. So I have like a group, when I log in, I see our 5K group. We have a 5K coming up. I have an events group and I have a marketing and communication group. And so when I log in, I see all of the ministries that I work with and the different groups that are under GroupMe. 
Okay, cool. So I'm starting to see um, some differences between GroupMe and text messaging. What are some of the other differences um, that make this more appealing than just simple texting back and forth? Well, I mean, I think we've all been a part of a group text, right? Where your brother text messages you and he includes your family, but then he includes his in-laws or maybe his friends. And we have no clue who we're communicating with or who's in that thread. And so, and it can get a little frustrating and annoying when a group message kind of blows up on your phone and you don't know whose numbers is whose. And um, that's one of the things with GroupMe that you have the ability to see people's names. Um, that's probably the, the biggest difference is that you can see who you're, who you're communicating with over the text message. And I'll go into further um, features of GroupMe later on in our discussion. Okay, very good. Yeah, that's one of my things that um, my wife deals with quite a bit. She's a teacher, and so she'll get group messages from um, other teachers or parents of her students with uh, multiple people, and they'll keep pinging and, and making the noise. She's like, I don't even know who these people are. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, absolutely. Let's shift gears and talk about how to use it within ministries. And we'll talk about churches in a second, but um, your ministry is a bit different than a, a traditional church. Tell us a little bit about your ministry, the work that you do there at the LSC, and um, how you use Group Me um, to support your ministry. Absolutely. So we're actually a registered service organization of the LCMS Church. We are not a congregation. Um, but we do offer Bible studies and fellowship opportunities, and we even go on mission trips. Um, and in the past, we were primarily focused on students, campus ministry. But since we've opened the coffee house, our audience has just exploded. Um, yesterday, an eight-year-old came into my office and wanted to show me something. And <laughs> then a couple months ago, we had 90-year-old women who were playing bridge in the coffee house. Um, so. Our audience has really changed and our ministry has really changed, but we primarily use uh, Group Me. Behind the scenes, we have different groups. Like we have a women's Bible study that meets two times a month. And so we have a group that we can connect with, kind of send reminders. Hey, we have Saturday sips, um, you know, next Saturday, join us. And we have one for our college age Bible study. We have one for our um, young adult Bible study. We, have, um, we are a student-led organization, and so in order for us to be able to partner with campus, we have to have an executive team of students. So um, my, our, my coworker, Paige, she's our DCE here, she has an executive um, leadership team that she connects with um, through GroupMe. We have a marketing communication team. We have some students that help us with some graphic design and so I connect with them that way. And then um, Paige also has a mission trip group that she uses. Like they just went to Mexico over spring break. So she sends reminders and kind of stays in touch with people behind the scenes, not, not via email. This is a little bit more intimate than email, but um, she can connect with them leading up to the mission trip as well. That's really cool. Now, uh, I know it's not a traditional church setting, although many of those things that you described happen in a, a, a church. Um, but you also have quite a bit of experience doing communications with churches. So um, using that kind of combination of your, your past experiences and what you're doing now, how would you recommend that a church could use GroupMe? Yeah, I, you know, when I wrote the article, I, I wrote it from my perspective in this ministry, but then, you know, I started thinking about how could churches use this? And I really think there's some really kind of cool ways that churches could use this. I, I could see it being used in leadership roles, whether that's your church council, your elders, um, other boards, committees, to stay in touch between their meetings. If there's, if there's things that need to be communicated that aren't really warranted for an email, group me would be a great tool to use. I also see this being probably uh, beneficial for subcommittees, like maybe the mowing team. You know, I was thinking about if you have a week that you're assigned to mow the campus um, and you, you can't commit to that week anymore because a family engagement came up, you could send a message to the other mowing team members and ask, hey, could I switch? And, and it might be a little bit easier to communicate via group me than an actual formal email. I could see this being um, really beneficial for maybe like funeral luncheons or just fellowship events in general, maybe your event committees at the churches. 
I can see this really being beneficial for staff as well. I mean, we all have those, we have face-to-face face -face communication with our staff members, but you know, to be honest, pastors are in and out of the office a lot. You know, they've got hospital visits and they're going to meetings and, and it can be hard to connect with ministry staff that are out and about a lot. So I, I, I see this being a tool that could be handy for staff conversations. Small groups and Bible studies, I, I could see this being a really key tool in connecting with each other outside of, of the gatherings together. I could see maybe a pastor or a, a group leader asking digging deeper questions or asking, how can I pray for you this week? Um, and, it, and it gives you the opportunity to connect outside of of the actual meeting. And, and again, with youth leaders, um, you, can, uh, you can connect with your young adults or your youth because the fact of the matter is, is a lot of youth are using GroupMe already. That's really interesting. And after we uh, shared it around here, some of our um, newer employers were like, oh yeah, I use that. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I <laughs> guess I'm out of the loop on that. So let's <laughs> dig into uh, some of the features and the real benefits of GroupMe. Um, what are some of the unique characteristics that really make it a, a good, you know, one of the pros of using GroupMe? Sure. So one of my favorite features is the desktop messaging. Um, like I said earlier, it's Android, iPhone, text messaging, but you can also do just normal desktop messaging. So I get used to communicating with Paige. Um, we both have iMacs or MacBooks, excuse me, iMacs, that's old school, geez. Um, <laughs> but we both have MacBooks, so when we're not together, I can easily, it's so much easier to type a message than to text a message. Sure. And so I've gotten used to being able to just message her through my desktop. But when I have people, whether it's students or other people on the board I serve on with the other non-for-profit, a lot of people have Androids and I don't have that capability to connect with them um, that easily. So my favorite feature is the desktop messaging. Um, other features include, I just mentioned the compatibility with multiple devices. Okay, so we go back to the group text messaging that we were talking about earlier and how annoying it is when you're in a, a group text and your phone just blows up. Um, one of the things that I like about GroupMe is on my phone, I can set my notifications to not have a banner on my phone or not have a ding. I, I set it so that I just, the icon changes, you know, to like two. Okay. Um, so that's really handy. You can also, um, there's an office mode. So you can turn off the notifications on your phone when you have a desktop GroupMe oh, message that's open. Cool. Mm -hmm. oh, I like that. And then probably another great feature is a going back to the group messaging again through your through your phone is that you can actually leave conversations. You know, we get in those awkward text messages and you don't know who anybody is and you, you just wanna leave, but you can't, you're stuck. And so with, uh, with group me, you can leave. So if you're no longer on the mowing team, you just leave that conversation. And then um, you can also mute conversations. Um, one of the things that one of our students, for, for my blog post, I interviewed a, a couple of our students and one of them pointed out something that I didn't even think of. Uh, she really likes the feature of basically security and safety is that through GroupMe, she has control of the information that's being shared about her, whether that is her phone number. She doesn't want to have, you know, strangers having her phone number or her email, but um, she really likes the security feature. And then um, our DCE page is one of her favorite features is the ability to, to pull people. So um, she'll ask, you know, like, hey guys, do you guys want to go to a movie on Friday? Or um, we're going to have a new Bible study. What do you guys want to do? And she'll, she'll put like three or four options on there. And then she can get kind of a quick feel of what people are looking for. That's awesome. Now, tell me a little bit about the texting part of it. So you can still text to this group without it showing your phone number on there? Yeah, it just says like the name. Okay. Um, so like it would just say Jen Eichmann or whatever. Um, like when you start a group, you, you type in someone's email address or phone number and you give them a name and then you'll see Jen Eichmann. 
That's really cool. Yeah, with our mm -hmm. church council, um, I set up our meetings and coordinate with the other members of the council, and I have an, a good understanding of who responds via email and who I have to text because they never check their emails because we have many mm -hmm. different ages represented there, and it everybody seems to have a different preference. Uh, it sounds like something like this would be uh, better than having to go through you know three or four different communication channels to reach one group. So with mm -hmm. everything, I'm sure there's some downsides. What would you say are some of the cons of using Group Me for um, ministry purposes? Sure. So I, I interviewed um, Paige and two of our students, and this is one of my frustrations as well, and all three of them mentioned it, was losing the details. So the thing about like Facebook, you know how like within the last year or so, you have the ability to uh, reply to a specific comment Mm -hmm. That's not really an option in Group Me at this point, but I think it would be something that they easily could change to make it less messy. So what happens is, is like I post a question, and then two people answer, and then another person posts a different question not related to mine, and then my original question gets lost. Sure. And so if so, we were talking about you know like if you're trying to communicate um, VBS is this week. You, you communicate that through your normal channels, like your website, your Facebook, your you know verbal announcements, emails, things like that. But Group Me would be more for uh, details like reminders. It wouldn't be the only place that you communicate those specific details. Okay. Another, um, another thing that Paige brought up was that it's not necessarily a limitation of Group Me, it's just a limitation of working with people is there are people who are scared of using technology and they might not be welcome to the idea of using something like GroupMe, or they might not even have a smartphone. Um, so that would probably be a drawback, is if you have one individual that doesn't want to embrace GroupMe. But I think that would be very, very easy, um, kind of maybe an opportunity to sit down and do some technology training with them and just, just show them, set up a practice group on GroupMe, set up a test group, and just practice with them and show them that it is, it is very easy to use. And, and we do have a, a user guide as well on how to set that up. And, and that's probably, um, like I said, not a limitation to group me in general, but just a limitation to people being scared of using new technologies. Sure. And then probably the last um, con is that people do prefer text message for individual one-on-one -on -one messages. So like the individuals that I, that I interviewed, they were saying that if they were going to be individually communicated with, it's more, uh, they would prefer to have it through an, a text message versus group me. Well, that makes sense um, because it's mm -hmm. not, there's not a concern about privacy or security there when you're already, you know, having that one-on-one -on -one dialogue, you know with whom you're communicating. It's not, um, there's nothing sensitive about that or there, there is sensitivity to it. And so you don't have to worry about uh, other people seeing that. It's not gonna get that. Yeah, absolutely. Thing. Good. One well, of the things I didn't yeah. mention, though, was that there is an ability to direct message through GroupMe. Okay. So you could do a specific message between two people and the rest of the group wouldn't see it. I see. Okay, so maybe the notification part of text messaging then makes it a little bit quicker to respond or know that somebody had texted to you and that might be a preference. Or is there another reason why text messaging might be better for one-on-one -on -one communication? I don't know. It's just like a, a theme that I saw around the students that I talked to is that they said, you know, more um, in depth, more maybe intimate personal conversations are appropriate through text versus group me. All right, cool. Well, let's talk um, for churches. Let's say that um, somebody who's watching is now convinced that they want to use group me at their church. What would be kind of that ideal situation where group me would work for a church? versus a situation where it may not, um, whether it's technology or audience. What do you think would be a good situation or a good church to use GroupMe? I think it's probably not from an entire church standpoint, but it's more so probably from a ministry standpoint or maybe a group standpoint. I don't think you'd probably want to set up an entire GroupMe message with the entire congregation on it. <laughs> um, but I think it would be, you know, the, the staff members 
choice is, is this appropriate? Like I think about my 85 year old grandma and her Bible study, she probably wouldn't, they probably wouldn't be okay using something like group me, but you know, like my 15 year old nephew, um, his, his youth group would probably totally be into using something like group me. So I think it's, it's gotta be something that the majority of that specific demographic or specific group would embrace. Okay. Very good. Well, um, we've got the free download available on the blog, but if you want to just do a quick recap of what a church would do or a church worker would do to get started with GroupMe, um, how would they go about doing that? What's the, what's the best first step? Well, uh, download the app or go to their website and set up your own account and then just start playing around. You can you could set up a sample group with some of your other coworkers just to kind of get used to using the app and then just kind of brainstorm Brainstorm the different ideas that you could utilize it because I really feel that the the opportunity to use it is endless, both okay. both by ministry and by you know caring for your campus facilities, the leadership teams, things like that. Very cool. Well, Jen, thanks so much for not just sharing this new idea with me, but writing the blog post and joining me today on the yeah. video. Uh, I'd love to hear from our viewers uh, what thoughts you have. Um, if you're watching after the fact, go ahead and comment. We'll still be paying attention to that. Uh, if you've got any questions for Jen, I know she'll be watching that too. But Jen, thanks again for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, everybody, we'll be back next week with another great topic on how to leverage technology in your ministry. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.